up, I go with my normal face Yeah, I blend right in with my normal face Yeah, the world is looking like a cartoon to me Got a look on my face like nothing is news to me Got to put on a performance if I end up in the former place It's just me with my normal face Yeah, welcome back to another crazy story I'm gonna tell you to sub to the channel and all that Because you're already subbed And if you're not, you lacking So, uh we're gonna jump right into it, man. This one's a real crazy story. Um, basically, I almost did the theme song to the show One Tree Hill. True story. All right. <clears throat> so when I was 17, I'm a junior in high school. Um, I was already making music. We'll put those in air quotes. I was making music, I was recording. Um, it was way before the mixtape days, but you know, and I was recording in my dad's house. So I would have, I did have like what I called an album. It was a bunch of songs and I'd, you know, have them on burnt discs and, uh, and uh, I'd pass them out to people. Well, there's this girl in one of my classes that got one of those little demo CDs. She really liked it. She, she brought it to her father who had some kind of connection, some kind of Hollywood connection, right? And I'm literally Hollywood. I didn't mean to put those in quotes. <laughs> um, so her dad was really impressed and he got my information from my dad and linked me up with a guy named Sean Hepburn Ferrer. Now Hepburn, that's, that's, a, that's an iconic, name you should know that and if you don't he was the he, he is the son of the famous actress entertainer audrey hepburn he is her biological son so he got in contact with my dad was super excited he saw something in what i was doing he saw it was a uh you know whatever, a jam in the rough, if you want to call it that. Uh, and so my dad was kind of handling it. We were going back and forth, emails, phone calls and shit. Finally, uh, Sean Ferrer offered to fly us down to Santa Monica to meet up and talk business. And uh, he, he was a man of his word, man. He got right on that shit. He flew us out to Santa Monica put us up right there in a nice ass hotel room. We met with him and we were talking. And uh, from there, Sean Ferrer introduced me to this, this guy named Russ Landau, who is a composer, primarily for TV shows. Um, shit, man, uh, I'm trying to think of some shows that he did. Um, Survivor, you know, like big shows like that. This dude composed the theme music and such to, to the shows like that. So we were meeting and um, they're super excited to work with me. They want to kind of, they see the potential in me. And uh, basically, you know, we kind of formulate little, little ideas and shit where they want me to go. But they basically are saying they... I would be great. I would be a great fit to use my rapping to do like, th you know, theme songs for TV shows and shit. Um, but the specific idea to the show wasn't wasn't brought up yet. Um, my little seventeen-year-old ass was just kind of like, "Oh, this is really cool." Kind of feel star, you know. Kind of feel like a star. <laughs> A star or some shit, but also I'm just a little punk ass kid, man. We was in one of those nice hotels where they had the fucking the mini bar. They had a fridge that's just fucking packed full of those little just shots of you know good alcohol and shit. I just thought it was free, so I'm just I'm just getting fucked up, man. I'm just drinking one out, just pounding that shit, walking around Santa Monica, just faded as fuck at 17. Come to find out, those weren't free. <laughs> those were not at all free. Um, we got back home and uh, Sean Ferrer was a little upset about that. But you know what I'm saying? 
Dude, I, I kind of ran up a few hundred dollar bill for the dude. <laughs> so I, I'm still sorry about that, by the way, Mr. Ferrer. Um, but still kept in contact for the next few months. And then it was brought to my, then it was brought the actual pitch. And basically they came, they came to my dad about this show that was in pre-production called One Tree Hill. And he, and they explained what the premise of the show was going to be. And I'm like, I'm not really feeling it. It seemed like one of those little teen dramas, like kind of, and which was, you know what I'm saying? But they wanted me to do a theme song for that. I think there was one other show. There was one other show that they were that they tried to get me to do. It was a basketball show, and that one I think I actually did record something. I don't think it worked out. But I was feeling that more, you know what I mean? It was basketball. I can fuck with that. I, I have no, I don't watch shows like One Tree Hill. Never did. Never did. And so I turned them down. I, I, I said no. Like, I didn't want to do it. My dad was begging me to just have an open mind. But in my mind, I was like, man, this is, I'm 17. I'm, I'm already not, like growing up in like major hubs of hip hop like i have it kind of you know i have my workout cut for me cut out for me and i just at that time i just saw that uh, that wouldn't be good for my cred like i couldn't have my introduction and blow up like that as a rapper to be the rapper from the the opening of one tree hill i couldn't i couldn't even at that age man like I'm, I'm talking about there was dollar signs behind me. I mean, these guys are fucking cute. They, they're moguls. They don't just have their hands in one thing. They have multiple things, right? I was just one, one little kind of project that they saw that they could mold and shit. They make millions, man, through their, their different businesses and shit. So I was, my dad kept pleading with me and I would not budge. And then, uh, so that, needless to say, that kind of turned off Sean Ferrer and Russ Landau. You know what I'm saying? They're like, well, what are we going to do? You know? <laughs> Fuck it. You know what I mean? We'll find another fucking whatever we need. This is kind of like insert rapper here. You know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't no malicious shit, but it's a business. Like It's Hollywood shit. It's like, all right, if you ain't ready, see ya. So, and then that was that was it. That was it. We never really met up again, I don't think. Um, the emails got less and less, and then finally it was nothing. Um, and then that, my dad was pretty hot. Pretty hot about that, man. He was pretty bad for a while. That I just turned down possibly hundreds of thousands million I don't know who knows bro who knows I like but and through the years to come that was one of his favorite fucking stories to tell people about me you know because it turned from god you, I'm so frustrated that you are so stubborn and just kind of so ignorant to possibilities it t turned from that to wow man he he had integrity and he stuck to his guns and he listened to his heart you know and he knew who he wanted to be and who he would inevitably become if he went that route and i chose to lack of a better word lack of better words keep shit real you know what i mean i, I wouldn't be taken seriously if 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 people knew me from that you know, and that's what they would know me by. That I would have been synonymous with that. You know what I mean? You know, nobody would give a fuck. So I chose to take the long road, and uh, for better or worse, man, that's that's life. That's that's definitely been like the ongoing theme in in my journey. You know, what I'm saying I'm taking the the detour for shit. Even though I had some things presented to me, it didn't feel right, then I, I wouldn't fuck with it. 
and I've struggled and, and who knows, man, I could have been financially set if I had gone with that, but something that you, you live with forever, like I got to live with enough shit within me. And, uh, there could have been a way that I could have done that and still, but I didn't, it just wasn't, wasn't comfortable for me. And, uh, and I think I got, I'm building that natural respect and people do know that I'm a real artist and I'm really for hip hop. I'm not, I'm not here to use hip hop to fulfill some other shit that has nothing to do with it and has no love for it. I am, I live and breathe this shit to the fullest, you know? So anyway, my dad in years to come understood that and he was very proud of me for that. So yeah. That's it, man. That's that's the story, man. I turned down probably a million dollar kind of gig, man. Who knows, man? But uh, still, again, early on, it was something that happened early on that told me that, hey, I do have something. I do have something worth it. I mean, these are Hollywood motherfuckers. You know, the son of Audrey Hepburn telling me that I have potential, you know. So that was big, that was big, big, big. And even though I didn't take the deal, that was a form of getting on, so to speak, you know, and, and it fueled me in the years to come. And, and more so because I knew that um, I stood for something and I had standards and, and morals for myself. And, uh, and that, that really, maybe see it and in the years to come i've really kind of just been honing in on that and uh here i go man you know i still feel like i put it out from the heart and i and only do shit that that i believe in so yeah but to um to give it a, a funny amusing anecdote <laughs> to bring this shit uh to, <laughs> to close it out one year, I think it was after my breakup and I was super depressed and I didn't even have my own place and I was struggling. I didn't know where I was at. This was, a, I don't know, five years ago, <laughs> five years ago. I look up Sean Ferrer on the IMDB and there he is. And there is his personal phone number. And one night I'm drunk, <laughs> I'm desperate. I'm just like, man, fuck it. Why not? I call this dude. He picks up. <laughs> hey, yo. I'm fucking like, what, 30, 31 at this point. And the last time he saw me when I was, it was when I was 17. I'm like, hey, what's good, man? And this dude was in, I had woke him up in the, from the dead of sleep. Because this motherfucker lives somewhere in, around a different part of the world. So I fucking called him in the middle of the night. He was asleep. He was total, totally off guard. I explained who I was and it was just like, uh, what? Like, eventually he remembered. And I'm like, yo, dude, remember when I uh, had that opportunity and I wasn't ready to do shit? Well, you know, I found out who I was and I've grown and shit, you know what I mean? And if you have any fucking connects or I'll fucking put the humility on the line, dude. And he's just like, I'm out of the I'm out of the business. He's like I don't really do that no more, but I wish you the best of luck. And that was it. <clears throat> right in the motherfucking face. <laughs> Karma. But you know what? Like you got to try. You got to try and and I did feel like that. I did feel like, "Hey, man, like you caught me in my developmental years. I didn't know who I was. I knew who things I believed in at the core, but I wasn't who I was." And, and, uh, you know, I've made a lot of shit for myself happen in the years. That's, that's past, you know, so, but, hey, it didn't work out, and, and that's all good. That's all good. You know, we move on and shit. Um, but, yeah, funny, right? <laughs> oh, 17-year-old highway. I don't, I wasn't even highway yet.
I don't even want to tell you. I don't even want to say my rap name when I was 17, but I wasn't Highway yet. I was coming into Highway. You know what I'm saying? I think that was one of the major defining moments that created Highway as you know him today, man. So, yeah. So, shout out to Sean Ferrer and Russell Landau. Um, still glad I didn't do the One Tree Hill show. <laughs> and uh, thank you for all the, the little the little bottles of alcohol that day in Santa Monica. That shit was dope. And I felt like a little baller. So, I, there it is, man. There's my story, and I'll stick it to it. Another crazy story. I got more. Don't worry. But, yeah, man. If you like this shit, man, tune in. You'll see another one. All right? My people, I love you. Uh -huh.